Now, crappy fishing as a whole can be an intimidating thing to start when you're just beginning. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over a simple setup that you know you're gonna catch fish if you're around fish the next time you're out in the water. What's going on? I'm Steven Turner with Turner Fishing. This channel is about showing you how to catch more fish, put more limits in your boat, feed your family, and have fun while you're doing it. So in today's video, we're just gonna be going over just a simple setup. Now what I mean by simple, you know, everybody's got a story. You know, I go out uh, teaching people a lot, a lot of scope in their boats, and I bring this one little tackle box. And it, it amazes me, you know, how many diverse anglers we have out there. You know, some people I go with, they'll have thousands upon thousands of different jigs and different colors. And then you've got people, I guess like me, that if you open my tackle box, it tells a story. Because in here, I've got too many prototypes that I've been fishing with. And then I've got Crappy Man Green, Monkey Milk, Urgle, and Goblin. You know, in different size jigs that I sell. And I've got my live scope stuff, my bobber stoppers, and different size jig heads, and a couple slip corks. And really, that tells a story that, you know, I use only two or three colors even though I do run, you know, a, a bait business. But I believe in those colors and every lake has certain colors that work better than others, so. But in my opinion, when you're first starting out, Crappy Man Green and Monkey Milk, you know, they go hand in hand. If they're not biting those, you need to go somewhere else. So for a starting rod, what you're going to look for is I'm 6'4", so this is about a 6'6". You know, this probably goes couple however many above my head you know if you're a shorter person you may want a six foot rod but a six foot to seven foot rod to start out with and you know if you're at walmart or something just take the rod and try to bend it and you want the tip of it to bend and not the, the middle of the rod because if the middle of the rod bends and the tip doesn't you're not going to be able to have the sensitivity that you need when you're first starting out now if you have one that bends you know kind of in the middle, those are really good for skipping dots and stuff, which the limber tip's really good for that too. But this is gonna give your jig more power. But I've, you know, we're probably gonna cover that into some future episodes. And I've, I've, you know, talked about that in the past. But get you, this is a, a Shakespeare ugly stick, crappy rod. You know, I have no affiliation with this rod. I used ACC sticks for years, but I ended up breaking every one I had on the hook set, so. I'm not gonna buy a rod that I don't trust. So, you know, this is a hand-me-down rod. I got it from my dad, the crappy man. And this is paired up with four pound test, Vicious line. Now, you know, another thing, I'm not sponsored by Vicious or anything. It's just a cheap line that you can buy at Walmart. But I mean, honestly, if you can't pull in a, a two pound fish, with that, you're, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, that's another thing, you know, we kind of need to cover. Four pound test line, six pound test, eight pound test. That's kind of your, your bread and butter. Four pound test, don't be scared of it. Uh, your average crappy, you know, your 10 to 12 inch fish, you're going to be able to flip those fish in. No problem. Don't be scared of that line. Six pound test, you, I mean, a two pounder, you can throw it in the boat. Eight pound test, obviously, you can throw them in the boat. It all comes down to your water clarity and all of that. So if you fish a really, really clear reservoir, the smaller line you can get away with, the better. Now, if you're fishing a longer jig pole, you know, six to eight pound test minimum. I wouldn't put four pound test on a 10 foot or higher rod. Now, as far as reels goes, this is a PC Fun. I wanna say it's a three or 500, a PC, PC Fun 500. And basically, reel-wise, I want something that winds smooth. And other than that, we're crappy fishing. Like, this reel is not going to catch me the fish. This rod is not going to catch me the fish. And this line is not going to catch me the fish. It's going to help me get the fish in. So you got to get to the point where you're the one catching the fish. So we're going to show you two ways to rig up a jig. You know, we're not talking about minnow fishing. I ain't got nothing against minnow fishing, but you can do the same knots 
to minnow fish as you can with fishing a jig. So we're gonna grab a jig. Now every, every product we use is Crappy Man Jigs. What we have here is a 164 ounce jig head with no collar. Now, why do I use a 164 ounce jig head? That is because I don't want to be in that fish's face for as long as possible. Now, when you're first starting fishing this, you've got to have patience. A 132 and a 164 ounce jig head falls very slow. Uh, it is not a 1 16th ounce. What's going on? I'm Steven Turner with Turner Fishing. This channel is about showing you how to catch more fish, put more limits in your boat, feed your family, and have fun while you're doing it. So in today's video, we're just going to be going over just a simple setup. Now, what I mean by simple, you know, everybody's got a story. You know, I go out uh, teaching people a live, uh, live scope in their boats, and I bring this one little tackle box, and it, it amazes me you know, how many diverse anglers do we have out there? You know, some people I go with, they'll have thousands upon thousands of different jigs and different colors. And then you've got people, I guess like me, that if you open my tackle box, it tells a story. Because in here, I've got too many prototypes that I've been fishing with. And then I've got Crappy Man Green, Monkey Milk, Urgel, and Goblin. You know, in different size jigs that I sell, and I've got my live scope stuff, my bobber stoppers, and different size jig heads, and a couple slip corks. And really, that tells a story that, you know, I use only two or three colors, even though I do run, you know, a, a bait business. But I believe in those colors, and every lake has certain colors that work better than others, so. But in my opinion, when you're first starting out, Crappy Man Green and Monkey Milk, you know, they go hand in hand. If they're not biting those, you need to go somewhere else. So for a starting rod, what you're going to look for is I'm 6'4", so this is about a 6'6". Six, six. You know, this probably goes a couple, however many above my head. You know, if you're a shorter person, you may want a six foot rod. But a six foot to seven foot rod to start out with and you know, if you're at Walmart or something, just take the rod and try to bend it. And you want the tip of it to bend and not the, the middle of the rod. Because if the middle of the rod bends and the tip doesn't, you're not gonna be able to have the sensitivity that you need when you're first starting out. Now, if you have one that bends, you know, kinda in the middle, those are really good for skipping docks and stuff, which the limber tip's really good for that too. But this is gonna give your jig more power. But, I've, you know, we're probably going to cover that into some future episodes. And I've, I've, you know, talked about that in the past. But get you, this is a, a Shakespeare ugly stick crappy rod. You know, I have no affiliation with this rod. I used ACC sticks for years, but I ended up breaking every one I had on the hook set. So I'm, I'm not going to buy a rod that I don't trust. So, you know, this is a hand-me-down rod. I got it from my dad, the crappy man. And this is paired up with four pound test vicious line now you know another thing i'm not sponsored by vicious or anything it's just a cheap line that you can buy at walmart but i mean honestly if you can't pull in a, a two pound fish with that you're i don't i don't know what to tell you uh that's another thing you know we kind of need to cover four pound test line six pound test eight pound test that's kind of your your bread and butter, four pound test, don't be scared of it. Uh, your average crappy, you know, your 10 to 12 inch fish, you're gonna be able to flip those fish in, no problem, don't be scared of that line. Six pound test, you, I mean, a two pounder, you can throw it in the boat. Eight pound test, obviously, you can throw them in the boat. It all comes down to your water clarity and all of that. So if you fish a really, really clear reservoir, the smaller line you can get away with, the better. Now, if you're fishing a longer jig pole, you know, six to eight pound test minimum. I wouldn't put four pound test on a 10 foot or higher rod. Now, as far as reels go, this is a PC Fun. I want to say it's a three or 500, a PC, PC Fun 500. And basically, reel wise, I want something that winds smooth 
And other than that, we're crappy fishing. Like this reel is not gonna catch me the fish. This rod is not gonna catch me the fish. And this line is not gonna catch me the fish. It's gonna help me get the fish in. So you gotta get to the point where you're the one catching the fish. So we're gonna show you two ways to rig up a jig. You know, we're not talking about minnow fishing. I ain't got nothing against minnow fishing, but you can do the same knots to minnow fish as you can with fishing a jig. So we're gonna grab a jig. Now every, every product we use is crappy man jigs. What we have here is a 164 ounce jig head with no collar. Now, why do I use a 164 ounce jig head? That is because I want to be in that fish's face for as long as possible. Now, when you're first starting fishing this, you've got to have patience. A 132 and a 164 ounce jig head falls very slow. A lot of people do fish with a 1 16th or a 1 8th ounce jig head. But when you're first starting out, you're... Let me, let me kind of visualize this for you before we get into tying this knot. All right. So you, you're fishing the dock. This bag right here is your wad of fish. Now, if you ever get the chance to use live scope, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's, we just dropping stuff. If we're gonna roll with it. We ain't editing this video. This is your wad of fish on a dock. You got a dock up here. Now, if you throw a 1 16th ounce, you're gonna throw it right here, you know, where the dock ends. That jig's gonna go down, and all your fish is up here. If you throw a 164, it's gonna go slowly, and they have more of a chance to bite. That's the easiest explanation I can give for using a smaller jig head. You know, if the wind's blowing 10 miles an hour, whatever, throw a small jig. It's gonna get bit. You're gonna have to trust me on that one. Now we're gonna do a very, very simple knot. This is just to get you started. I am gonna show a more advanced knot after this one. So you're gonna take your jig head, put your line through the eyelid. So you're left with that, just a, a jig on a line. You're gonna take that jig head and you're gonna spin it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight's my favorite number, so we're gonna roll with that. You're gonna take your tag in up here on your left hand. I'm gonna be dropping a rod, and you're gonna take that tag and you're gonna throw go through the hole near the jig head. Then you pull that up. And then you take that tag in and you go through the bigger hole and then you just pull everything tight and that is an improved clinch knot and that knot is, is just very versatile you can tie you know long pole jig pole whatever you take and cut your tag in off and there you go you got that jig head ready to roll now the issue that I have with a improved clinch knot, now this is a personal preference. Improved clinch knot is very easy to tie, but when you sling it, that knot moves around and you don't know whether your jig is in the water like that or whether your jig's in the water like that or whether your jig's in the water like this. And that's just the downfall of using a clinch knot. Now to you know, make that so it doesn't happen, what we're gonna do is tie a loop knot. Now this is a surgeon's knot. I have boat flipped two and a half pounders with this knot and I have lost a lot of fish with this knot. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You're, you're a risk taker, but you're gonna go through your jig just like normal I have it like that and you're going to pull out some line probably a good 10 centimeters and what you're going to do you're going to take that line your your index and your middle finger is wrap it around so you're left with your main line coming through it's going around your fingers you got two two pieces of line around your fingers you take that jig head and you go through right where the hole is right here one two three but on that third pass through, you want to grab the line with the eyelid and slowly pull it together. 
and you want to get it right where that knot is about to close in and then take it and move it off of that eyelid and so you get it all off the eyelid it kind of looks like that and then you pull it tight and this is a loop knot now to show you the benefits of a loop knot and take that tag in off is your jig head your jig is always going to be horizontal it's always going to be just like this uh, if you throw it really hard you know we can move this around whatever it's always going to fall back this way that's the benefit of using a loop knot now we've got the rod the reel the jig head so next we need to put the jig on and what i recommend you using to begin with is uh the little minnow from crappy man jigs this I've, I've caught fish 365 days of the year i've caught big fish little fish giant fish it's a 1.5 inch bait very very easy to rig all right so on this little minnow, there's a little ridge at, at the tip of his eye. You've got two, two eye sockets on one side, and you've got the, the ridge. And you want to go down that back, like the back of the jig. You just want to thread it down, and you want to keep it in the middle at all times. And you basically want the, the hook to make one loop until it pokes out the back. And when that hook pokes out the back, you just push it forward. And there you go. And yeah, the jig's like this now, but the plastic that I use makes these jigs float. And the reason for that is when it gets in that water, you're gonna have a perfect horizontal jig at all times. And another key thing is your drag. You know, anytime you get in a boat, this thing may move. So I want it just where I can barely pull it out. Just barely. That way you don't rip their face off. Uh, crappy are called paper mouths for a reason. If you hit them too hard, you will rip their uh, mouth and you're going to lose that fish. But, and the easiest way to fish this is honestly pull up to a bridge dock. Uh, if you're more a little bit advanced, find some brush piles and you really just want to flick it out next to whatever structure. Put your line right here and this this allows you to use any rod in the world i don't care if you pick a stick up off the ground and put line on it if you can put that line on your finger you're going to feel that fish when he thumps it because that separates anything malfunctioning with your rod the rod don't matter the reel don't matter it's just your line connected to your bait and that fish's mouth when that fish closes on it you're gonna feel it. And the more you do it, this becomes like a trigger system. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've set the hook and I'm like, why did I even set the hook? But I got the fish. It's just, I felt something different. So we're gonna have this beginner series. We're going to uh, keep pushing forward with it. This uh, is gonna be probably a twice a month thing where I'm just going to step back for a minute and remember that people are just now starting. You know, some of my videos are going to be more advanced. So, you know, subscribe, check those out and try to learn as we go. But I really want to make a video series where I step back and remember not everybody knows everything. And, you know, I've been doing this for four or five years. I've probably talked about everything three or four times, but I got to remember that every day there's somebody new coming along. So join me on my journey. Subscribe down below. Check out crappymanjigs.com. Grab you some crappy man green and monkey milk. Get out on the water. Throw that 164, that 132. Have patience and catch fish.